Hi guys and welcome to part 5 of Mechanics of Breathing. In this section we're going to talk about the airway epithelium. This is a diagram of that epithelium here shown in the trachea. and This is a ciliated epithelium and it has a very important function. It needs to trap you know any kind of dust particles and messy things that end up here in that mucus and be able we have to be able to cough those and remove them. So what's necessary is a mucus layer in that lumen and also let me show you along with that mucus layer that's indicated sort of in this light brown color here is this watery saline layer. So here's the epithelium with the cilia and I get these dust particles and I need to move them out here by coughing. But if I didn't have this watery layer, this would get very gunky, kind of like cystic fibrosis, get very gunky and stuck, and it would be a problem. It wouldn't work to remove some of these particles that get trapped. So to make the mucus are the goblet cells. I don't know if you remember these from anatomy, it's goblet cells, and they will constantly be pumping in that mucus. But this watery fluid, that's what we're going to look at next, how that maintains the water there and, um, and the salinity of that water. So um, this is just one model of that saline secretion. Uh, and there are other ways that this happens, but your book covers this one. That's why we're going over this one way. And we're thinking about how does the sodium chloride get into that lumen and maintain it there and not let the mucus sort of overpower everything. Let's do it in steps. So I've erased some of the steps and step uh, decided to start with step one. But step one tells us about the NK CC uh, and how it brings chloride ion into the epithelial cell from the extracellular fluid. Well, what is that NKCC? Sodium potassium chloride ion cell transporter. So sodium potassium chloride cell transporter. And that's down here. So this number one here, we have a transporter that's now moving three, it's a co-transporter, moving three different ions. Sodium for every two chlorines and potassium. So one sodium, two chlorines, one potassium. And this, they will transport together this calcium would be transported and then pretty soon it'll exit the cell with a sodium potassium pump and out it goes. Potassium that enters is also going to do that. It's going to sort of leave the cell through its leaky channels and we'll get rid of that. But the chlorine, this one's the one we're interested in right now, that's staying inside the cell for now, for step one. Okay, what we need to do in step two is bring it out this way, out the apical end. But for now, we got it inside and we're not getting rid of it. In step two, the apical anion channels, including CFTR, allow that chlorine to enter the lumen. So instead of just being here, now I'm going to keep moving it. And this channel, anion channel, is going to allow chlorine to exit. So now I have chlorine here in that lumen. Okay, because I, I let it in through the basal lateral end and I'm going to extrude it here through the apical end. Step three, what happens? Sodium goes from the extracellular fluid. So that's all, sodium is always in high concentration in the extracellular fluid, correct? And I'm going to transport that, but this time it's paracellular transport. So it's going to be between the cells here, not within, but between, and I'm bringing it up here. So now I have chlorine there, I have my chlorine there, and I have my sodium there. And that's moving there because of an electrochemical gradient. So there's more of the sodium here than it is in the lumen, so it's likely to travel towards the lower concentration of sodium. And in the last step, we have sodium chloride now, correct? We have Na and CL, we have sodium chloride, and once we pump salt into this area, then the outcome of that is that water is going to follow. 
solutes suck. So these solutes are sucking now this water that can also travel between the cells and over to the lumen. So water follows. So that's one mechanism by which we have sodium chloride being transported to the lumen and water is going to follow. We allow that watery fluid to not make that secretion exceedingly gunky. So if you think of that mucus drying out, that would be the problem, for example, as I mentioned in cystic fibrosis. So these channels, this is the problem with these channels in cystic fibrosis, it never comes here. Water doesn't travel because it's just the sodium there now. And this whole area becomes very full of mucus and not enough water in that region. So that's the last um, slide from this lecture. And we're going to end there. Thank you. The end. See you soon. Bye.